good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jan Grzymski. I'm a, a PhD and postdoc at Wazowski University in Warsaw, uh, lecturing international relations and European studies. So well, thank you for, uh, for your invitation and the opportunity to talk about um, the part of the research which uh, I did a uh, few years ago on uh, Central Europe um, and specifically in the civil society in Central Europe. Um, uh, this is the, 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 my contribution to what we call the Central European um, Dictionary of Political Concepts, which was uh, recently published by Rutledge and edited by Wojciech Przybylski and Marcin Moskalewicz. Uh, this contribution uh, is one of uh, several on, uh, on Central Europe. Uh, it does discuss the, the problem of civil society, um, a, a buzzword, definitely a buzzword, some, a very popular term uh, which came uh, after the transition in 1989 and immediately captured our attention here uh, and also uh, has been used for, for a very long time in a different occasions, political uh, in political discussions and social um, um, discussions. And actually, um, personally, in, in my professional life, I was also involved in, in working in some of the NGOs. And I always had this kind of uh, feeling of disappointment among, among many activists that something is not going on, uh, that there are some problems uh, um, with um, smooth social activities. So I had an impression that there were a lot of ideals and there were a lot of idealists, um, undoubtedly, um, who get involved in this. There was uh, an ethos of, uh, um, um, of many former dissidents, which also uh, influenced the, the civil society activities. But there was something <clears throat> which didn't work. And, um, and actually, the experience which I had in working uh, in, in, this, in the so-called civil society sector um, actually gave me um, uh, was the, the starting point to, to turn this into more academic or more, uh, let's say, professional way of looking at this. Um, and the, the title refers to, uh, to jargon. And this is the, let's say, anthropological observation which I had, uh, because the civil society, as a term, the civil society was um, um, was repeated on many different occasions. But I had the sense that it lost its meaning. Uh, the civil society, um, as most people understand this, is about people engaging into um, social life or um, in a in a volunteer way, or uh, it's related to philanthropy. Something was not going on, uh, and uh, that's uh, uh, this this paper is uh, let's say humble attempt to 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 see the the, the reasons for this. Uh, I do identify uh, those reasons uh, firstly in a predominance of NGO model. Uh, which I think was, uh, which I can talk about this in a second. Um, um, but also, I guess something which um, goes, um, which refers not only to, to NGO or the social, any social form of social activity, but on many other so, uh, forms of uh, public activity. Um, this, uh, what I mean uh, by this is the corporate pattern of daily activity. Uh, and it was very surprising to see how this uh, many organizations actually started acting <clears throat> in a way uh, they could imagine that, that they, they're imagining themselves as uh, a little corporation. So uh, this pattern of behavior, uh, the form of funding and the daily, uh, daily routine they have. The, uh, Actually, uh, th this is one of my major argument comes from this corporate pattern of um, uh, corporate pattern of um, auditing of acting of best practices, etc, etc. And I identify this as one of the major reasons for the uh, for what we can say that the failure of a genuine uh, social activity, 
not only in Poland but also in in uh, in central uh, in Central Europe. Um, obviously, there's also the question of the funding and of um, the, the influence of the European Union. The social and cohesion funds, um, on one hand, created an area, um, a social area, when you could uh, when you could uh, apply for the funding and get some funding. But it also created a very rigid criteria, which frame and which, uh, um, in a sense, limit. Uh, activity um, which was supposed to be spontaneous. Um, but there's obviously, um, if we look at the, the problem of civil society, I guess there's also another question, another problem which um, I, I do identify as a problem and it's related and it's linked to the, uh, to the um, to, to this corporate pattern of, uh, of acting and, and, and social activity, which is trust. Um, I guess the, um, one of the um, most important aspects of civil society, why people do cooperate with each other, uh, why they want to volunteer to do something for some other people, is uh, it can only exist when there is a trust. And there is obviously a large body of academic literature on um, on how trust is important in building social uh, social um, uh, social relations. So, uh, in a sense, by by this model of NGOs, uh, which uh, predominated here in, in in Poland and in Central Europe. I guess uh, instead of trust, we get something uh, something which uh, British anthropologist Michael Power called rituals of verifications. So there is a lot of ritual activity which uh, which um, which can be um, observed in something which was supposed to be uh, spontaneous. First is the granting uh, system and the granting scheme uh, and the motivation of the people. But it's also how it um, how it limits the um, the potential how this granting system potentially uh, limit the, um, the, uh, the the these forms of uh, of form of activities. So I, I do agree. Of course, uh, there will be people who um, well, I call them professionals and experts uh, because I guess this is uh, this is something which was also very striking to me that. You can spend your entire life uh, on, uh, I mean, vocational life, on working in uh, in something which should be just additional activity. Yes, I mean, you just, I don't know, you're a doctor or you're a teacher or you're uh, you run your business, but on the side you get involved in some social activities. But here, I guess, and this is what you uh, what you very aptly uh, notice that for many people that's the way of making a career. Um, which obviously uh, can be justified as, um, and it can uh, can comes from the fact that they can say, okay, there are some so complex issues which we have, uh, so that's why we need this form of professionalizations. If we are professionals and we are experts, then obviously we are more capable to meet the social needs. But then you get. Um, a different, uh, probably a much different uh, social pattern of behavior and social, um, the model of social life than uh, most people imagine as the uh, as um, uh, as the civil society should be. Um, I think that um, when we think about the granting system, because that's I guess that's the key, um, and. Uh, what you said about the the, the money people make uh, out of this, uh, I guess what the what is lacking here in Central Europe and it's probably lacking also in in Ukraine is uh, the genuine um, um, the genuine local grassroots culture of philanthropy, uh, and I don't think we have this here in Poland on the on the daily on a daily base. And that comes the problem of where we can get money to uh, uh, to support the civil uh, civil activities. Uh, if um, and if we also present the social life as complex and as very much uh, 
uh, complicated uh, to deal with, then obviously uh, we will be more focused on getting this professional uh, ethos of being a professional activist. Yes? So I can't spend only one hour per, per day. I have to spend 10 hours or eight hours per day, but then I still need to get money to, to live my own life. Um, so uh, this is um, this is probably the wh one of the major problems that professionalizations, granting system uh, that actually creates a different forms of subjectivity. This is what I call the, the, the different form of sub subjectivity that the social activists as a professional experts who can make money out of this. Yes. The other problem is obviously how this money is distributed and what are the sources of this funding. Um, because I don't think this is very innocent when you say I'm going to um, sponsor, uh, let's say, I don't know, um, um, one kind of social activity and then not the other uh, part of uh, the other form of social activity. Um, so that is that can be obviously a political issue. Uh, and that also happened here that there will be a lot of NGOs who will, uh, which will uh, which aim was to support the development of democracy, uh, integration with the European Union, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's not to say that this were the wrong goals, but there are still political goals. So if it's institutionalized in that way, uh, again, it limits the potential forms of activities. Uh, there's also another uh, problem related to the funding, which is uh, that um, and it re refers to the relation between the social organizations and the state and the government. Uh, well, the name, um, well, I mean, the, the abbreviation NGO comes from non-governmental organizations. So in theory, they should be separate. Yes. So this is also what is called the third sector. Uh, <clears throat> so there's there's a government, there's business and there's a social uh, um, the social organizations. However, what uh, what we can observe, and this is a global trend, I'm not, I, I, I wouldn't limit this only to Central Europe, is a form of outsourcing of state functions and state um, or the government functions uh, in the in the social uh, area in the social policy. Uh, so uh, that will probably refer to the. Uh, to the things like education, helping poor people, or um, um, or helping people who are excluded so somehow socially. Um, so in a sense, this kind of developmental goals uh, were transfer so to meeting the this uh, develop uh, development uh, goals were transferred from uh, tacitly <laughs> transfer from the state. To the, those those organizations, um, which is a larger problem. Yes, I mean, who should deal with uh, the people who um, who had some um, social who are socially stigmatized or who are socially excluded, or who just have uh, cannot um, uh, just they they they, are, they live in poverty, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so this is. This is a problem which uh, also refers to the to the funding because then the state is funding those organizations, even if it's not direct, it's redistributed by the granting agencies or the, the local authorities, etc., etc. So the paradox is that um, is, this is what happened in Poland with a very little uh, um, culture of philanthropy. Uh, we ended up with or non-governmental organizations which uh, heavily rely on the governmental uh, funding or the EU funding, um, which turn the social activists into professional uh, experts who just spend entire vocational life on, on, uh, on the social activities. And there is very little space and money. Um, and it's, there is no money because there is no philanthropy culture. Yes, so people do not donate uh, social organizations or on a on a systematic way. Uh, so there is very little time for something which is the most important, which is the spontaneous grassroots activities. 
Yes, I mean, I can go in my uh, to meet my neighbors and we can think of um, I don't know, just remaking the park, which is next to uh, where I live. And there will be a very it will be very difficult um, to get this kind of spontaneous activity um, because it does not fit into the model of NGO. I'm not going to set up NGO or the foundation um, because that will uh, entails bureaucratic, different bureaucratic things and also the problem of money. Yes. So uh, there is there's many paradoxes and this is also the reason why so many people are uh, they have this feeling of disappointment that uh, in the end um, they don't feel what social scientists call the agency yes that they can make an impact on the social life because it's so bureaucratic it's so uh, detached from uh, from actually those people who are the subject of um, uh, of social activities. There's one important uh, local uh, specificity, which is that um, most of the uh, majority of the activists uh, straight after 1989 were the former dissidents. So uh, we have a clear so the communist dissidents are the people who get involved in the opposition to the communist regime. Um, and this is also important because um, there is this uh, myth of uh, solidarity, which is in Poland, uh, that solidarity wiped out communism in Poland or even in the region, um, which was based on this grassroots social uh, movement, solidarity movement, um, and the strikes which started in Gdańsk in 1980. Uh, in the following uh, 60 months after the, the strikes in, in Gdańsk uh, shipyard, uh, roughly 10 million people attended and, and joined the, uh, the solidarity, uh, the solidarity uh, movement. So uh, there is this legend, there is this myth of Poles being actively and massively engaged into the, um, in, the social, uh, in the social activities. Uh, so this myth was also related to not only to this large massive um, uh, movement but also to specifically to the dissidents and the opposition uh, so there will be a lot of different activities um, like um, um, related to the this underground especially after the martial law um, in 1981 there will be a lot of gra uh, underground activities of um, um, helping each other, of uh, trying to uh, um, corporate, um, uh, sorry, the, uh, um, to, to, to spread different ideas, the books and the magazines, the opposition magazines, etc., etc. Um, so there, uh, there was also, what was also important in this part was that there was a form of Western aid uh, to this grassroots opposition movement. Uh, so there will be a different form of financial support. Uh, so from cash, simply from cash to some materials, to some uh, material goods, which were um, given from the from the Western countries to, uh, to Poland, to the solidarity movement. Uh, and obviously, th that was genuine, that was spontaneous, that was not something which was rigidly institutionalized. And I think um, many people who, uh, after, um, after 1989, after the fall of the communism, with the new ideology which comes with this, uh, and with the, the buzzwords like democracy, liberalism, uh, market economy, the civil society was one of them. And, Actually, that's very surprising because uh, the the um, the civil society as a concept came only after 1989, and it was projected to what the dissidents were doing before. So, in a way, after 1989, uh, many dissidents clearly see this as the continuation of what they were doing in a pre-1989. However. Uh, at the same time, the new um, wave of Western aid came 
uh, or the new form of Western aid, uh, aid uh, came up to 1989. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is what is uh, very, uh, in, a, in a very convincing way, um, described in the um, uh, and, and research in the book by Janine Vedder, Collision and Collusion, when she analyzed this form of Western aid um, to, uh, to, to Poland and to other countries in the region. Um, and one of the most important um, aspects of this Western aid was precisely the model of uh, NGO and the, this, uh, this form of um, corporate uh, a way of um, seeing the public activities. Auditing came from the West after 1989. I mean, now probably people uh, take this kind of, uh, take auditing as the natural way of, uh, um, of, of, the, of the, an activity we can have, yes? We need transparency, we need procedures, uh, we need uh, criteria, we need best practices. But in a way, that's only one way of doing <laughs> spontaneous. Uh, I mean, it's and it's not no longer spontaneous, but but it's one way of doing um, uh, any form of activity. Yes, and that's why I said it comes from the corporate model. Yes, because that's how the corporation works. They they rely on accountability of accounting, uh, on uh, of auditing procedures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if we compare, and this is a very good point of comparison, because before 1989, we could do a very beautiful job uh, on the grassroots spontaneous job without all this. Yes? And suddenly after 1989, the former dissidents and the new activists which came um, to the scene, the political social scene, they actually started considering this as the only model of, uh, of doing uh, any form of social uh, social activity. So there was a eruption of uh, of the um, uh, of many organizations, and there will be uh, hundred thousand, uh, hundreds and thousand new organizations which uh, which were set up. But I guess that's um, what was what is also important in this uh, in in NGO model is that there were certain expectations which comes from the larger political. Um, uh, larger political project of installing democracy. Um, the idea was that if uh, and that was what the politicians and the social activists and the NGO activists would say, if we set up this institutional model of NGO, uh, sooner or later, uh, certain uh, social bonds and so certain social activity will uh, mm, will be materialized, will happen. Yes, so the people will change their own behavior. They will start being socially active, etc., etc. So in a way, that was a form of uh, top-bottom um, imposition on the social um, on the social level. That if we had an NGO uh, and if we set up NGO in this little town, uh, and then people will get involved in this specific form of activity, like NGO. Then uh, afterwards, they will trust each other more. They will uh, 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 publicly engaged um, uh, more. They will start voting more. They will care more about the social uh, the social environment they have around. But as the time um, and the situation unfolds um, unfolded, uh, it, it didn't happen. And that's that's probably uh, again this kind of disappointment. Um, how this disappointment happened, because those, I mean, I, I th what I think what happened is that uh, people did not see this lim limits of the framework of NGO, and they were still hoping that NGO model can um, can create um, a genuine, spontaneous, uh, grassroots social activity, and it didn't. There's also an, another problem because uh, NGOs were considered as the universal model of uh, for the civil society, um, and uh, obviously that re that refers to American experience, and this is something which Alexis de Tocqueville would um, talk about in his Democracy in America. Yes, there were many organizations, there were many different uh, 
social associations which um, uh, which mushroomed in the 19th century America. True. Now, the mistake was probably that we took for granted that this is the only way of doing, or we did not see other culture aspects which allowed Americans to have this kind of model. Um, so, um, what, what was the problem is, and that might be the problem of what you said about the motivation, how, why people get involved in the, any form of um, activity or the, they have motivation to work for the others, is that probably in America, and that's also one of my argument here, in America, there were a coincidence of many different factors. Um, and it, but it was just a coincidence, a historical coincidence, or you can say a form of miracle that just happened there at that time and that space. Um, and it's very difficult to transfer this one to one from one uh, area to the other area. And I think what is um, and what what was the what what is one of the major problem with uh, the, the this model of associations and NGOs is the uh, the culture of philanthropy simply uh, even if you go to an American or, or British university you can see that there is uh, there are buildings there are, um, there are different rooms there are sometimes even different benches in the park in the campus which were founded by someone yes so someone get um, uh, left money in uh, for for this university, or were sponsoring this for the for a very long time. So this uh, this culture of philanthropy, of trusts, of uh, different foundations, uh, which were set up by rich people who wanted to share their own wealth with the others. Yes, uh, so that was probably the model of NGOs or the model of organizations and different associations can only work when you have independent uh, culture and genuine and generous culture of philanthropy, uh, which is strongly embedded in the social life. If that's not the case, you ended up with the situation like in Poland and in Central Europe, that the act the, acti the, the activity of non-governmental organizations it's in there it's even if it's indirect but it's still uh, sponsored by the by the state uh, and it's also the the other uh, the other aspect of this is that you are actually doing what the state does not want to do yeah this is this argument about the outsourcing of uh, of the social functions so there is no if if we don't have this uh, all these factors um, together, then probably the model of civil society in that way cannot work. Yes. Um, and and hence the uh, I'm I'm not saying that there, there are no people here in Poland who will have no motivation to help other people who do a voluntary jobs. Well, there are many of them. I'm. I'm sure, and they had a good intentions. I'm sure about this. But uh, um, if we look at the civil society and the third sector as the um, as an important social actor, which has a, a genuine agency independent of the government, I think it can only work when you have its own uh, culture of philanthropy. If we want to relate this to the to the situation of the Ukraine, um, well, I guess it's uh, that's the, the larger problem of how you build uh, democracy, um, and I think a heavy reliance on the alien culture models uh, might just not work. That's that's the clear. That's my message, um, and we had a lot of uh, Ukrainian students at at Wazowski University where, where I teach. Um, and this is also um, pretty similar to the expectations to join the European Union and this fascination with Europe or with the West. Um, well, I mean, I'm the last to say that you to say that you shouldn't uh, join the European Union. Uh, maybe you should, but uh, the, the point is to get a bit more realistic about how you want to build 
your own uh, democracy and it has to be adapted to the social practices which are already, already there. Um, that's uh, in, in the transition studies or in the social uh, science which started the transition from democracy to um, from the sorry from from communism to democracy. I think there was one larger error uh, of actually accepting first the concepts which comes from the from the West, like democracy, um, market economy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, and say that this is uh, what we are going to do, and then look not at the actual social practices, what people do, uh, but how much you lag behind. And I think this uh, this focus on how much you lag behind come, come on, uh, comes only when you see this as one universal model um, which comes from, uh, uh, which is external. Uh, so um, I guess that's um, that might be also a good um, a good conclusion and, and uh, for the um, and a good lesson for the Ukraine, uh, not to make the same mistakes as as we did here in, in Central Europe, because um, you know the, the paradox now in Poland is that um, obviously many NGOs are very pro-European, very pro-democratic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, but they are helpless in terms of their own agency. And especially now when we had the, the very conservative government, which can, um, was, let's say, very skeptical to this uh, many aspects of the European Union policy. Um, and I think that the only genuine civil society which uh, we had in Poland comes from the right wing conservative groups, uh, which are, um, uh, which could be, uh, which were linked to the the church, uh, to the church, uh, to the um, uh, to the religious uh, radio stations and the religious uh, media, because they do gather this spontaneously themselves. They do gather money. They have an independent from the state um, um, a culture of philanthropy, and they have passion, something which the NGO activities does not have, uh, do, do not have because they, they don't feel agency. So, um, you know, sometimes the civil society may come from a very unexpected uh, social practices um, and it does not necessarily have to be as it is the same in the West. So, um, so I guess that might work as my conclusion. Thank you. Okay, take care, bye-bye.